guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We're a couple of Americans on a quest to learn everything we can about the UK. This YouTube channel documents our British journey, so if British culture is something that helps you get out of bed in the morning, make sure you click subscribe. Today we are going to be introducing you to mysterious British places. While these places do exist, you will not be able to find them on the map. Instead, you'll have to ask a stranger for directions. The stranger's not local. Before we begin, a huge thank you to one of our dedicated subscribers, Tony Casey. Thank you so much for suggesting this video topic and for helping us write the script for this video. We could not have made this video without your local knowledge, Tony, so thank you very much for your help. We appreciate you. This is a local shop for local people. The Home Counties. The Home Counties are a semi-unofficial region in England. The title is sometimes used in regional administration, but it has no official definition or administration center. The Home Counties are a loose collection of counties that surround London. They include Berkshire, Buckinghamshire, Essex, Hertfordshire, Kent, Surrey, and Sussex. Some people also include Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire, and Oxfordshire, as well as Hampshire. So if you are British, question for you, which counties do you consider to be the home counties? From what we understand, the national perception of people that live in the home counties is that they are white, middle-class, Church of England suburbanites. Obviously, this is a massive generalization, but I think that is the going stereotype. Even though there is no precise definition of the home counties, most Brits will likely know somebody from this region. Do you? Spaghetti Junction. Sounds like a yummy place. This is a confluence of roads near Birmingham that is officially called Gravelly Hill Interchange. But almost nobody in Britain has heard of Gravelly Hill Interchange. Instead, they're familiar with a wild place called Spaghetti Junction. Based on what Tony told us, back when it was built in the 1970s, Spaghetti Junction was the most complex road junction in the UK. Its dramatic reputation caused a lot of dread for motorists for a while, but it is relatively simple to navigate. Unfortunately, with the popularity of sat-navs increasing, it's likely that the name Spaghetti Junction will gradually fade from the public lexicon. Just another hate crime against the Italians. The Rhubarb Triangle. Not only does the UK offer delicious rhubarb pies, but you can find rhubarb triangles there as well, only not on the map. That said, you can find the three points of the Rhubarb Triangle on the map. They are Wakefield, Rothwell, and Morley in West Yorkshire, but you won't find the triangle itself outlined on the map. You'll find that older residents in West Yorkshire call it the Tusky Triangle because Tusky is dialect slang for rhubarb. I wonder what the origin of that was. Is it mm -hmm. because they look like tusks? Kind of. Kind of creature? Kind of like a tusk? Rhubarb yeah. tusks? <laughs> if you know the origin of the word tusky, do let us know. Fun fact, at one time the rhubarb triangle actually produced 90% of the world's rhubarb. Though today the demand is much smaller, as is the triangle itself. Yorkshire forced rhubarb has protected designation of origin status, just like Cornish pasties and champagne. Why is it called forced rhubarb? That's because, as well as growing rhubarb in the fields, they also grow rhubarb in sheds. This is called forcing. They grow it in dark and heated environments, and the only light allowed inside is candlelight. What we've heard is that it grows so rapidly under these conditions that you can even hear the stalks groaning as they extend. <laughs> Wow, that's really strange because I thought they needed sunlight to grow. That's what I thought too, but apparently not rhubarb. If you've ever been inside of a forced rhubarb shed where they were forcing rhubarb like this, could you actually hear the sounds of rhubarb creaking as they grow? That's really creepy. Yeah, I imagine it would be kind of a freaky experience. The Great Glen. The Great Glen is a geological fault line that runs 62 miles from Fort William on the west coast of Scotland to Inverness on the east coast of Scotland. This fault line divides the Scottish Highlands into the Grampians in the southeast and the Northwest Highlands. On a map, you might see this swath of land referred to as Glenmore or Glen Albin, but most people refer to it as the Great Glen. From what we understand, in Scotland, Glen is a synonym for valley. 
Also, one of our patrons shared this fun fact with us. Thank you, Susanna. The Great Glen has so many locks, rivers, and canals running through it that there is a line of water that stretches from coast to coast. This means that, technically, there is an argument to be made that Northern Scotland is actually an island. <sighs> I wonder, if you're Scottish and you know this, is it possible to travel by small boat all the way from one side to the other through all the locks and canals and things? That sounds like so much fun. That would be a we lot of fun. We could be the first Yanks to make that journey in our little bathtubs. A little canoe. <laughs> <laughs> the Potteries. The Potteries is a collection of five or six towns around Stoke-on-Trent, where, as you may have guessed from the name, is where the pottery industry in England originated and prospered. Pottery legends Spode, Wedgwood, and Minton all were established and had their bases here. As with all the names on this list, the Potteries is not a place that you can find on a treasure map, but most Brits know that it refers to the area around Stoke. The Valleys. You will hear some celebrities of Welsh origin, like Tom Jones, announce proudly that they are from the Valleys. But you won't find the name the Valleys on any maps. Instead, what you'll find is a region called the South Wales Valleys. Many Welsh people and other Brits refer to this region as the valleys. Historically, the valleys were predominantly industrial areas used for mining coal and anthracite. The English Riviera. We all know how bad tourism boards can be with coming up with marketable names for places. Yet, despite the odds, the English Riviera is a tourism board invention that caught on. Back in the day, Torbay and South Devon coastal resorts used the term English Riviera as a way to attract Victorian tourists who were keen on taking in some delicious sea air. Making the most of, and perhaps overstating, the warm climate, the idea was to compare these resorts with those in the French Riviera in the south of France. Even today, these South English resorts are still pushing the comparison, though I doubt most Brits are actually taken in by reports of the fabled warmth of South Devon. Fun fact, did you know that Basil Fawlty is one of the English Riviera's most famous fictional residents? Yorkshire. I hate to break this to you, but Yorkshire doesn't exist. It popped its clogs after a heavy session of binge drinking sometime in 1974. Before that, Yorkshire was the largest county in Britain, and was historically divided into three administrative districts called Ridings. There was the North Riding of Yorkshire, the East Riding of Yorkshire, and the West Riding of Yorkshire. Then along came the Local Government Act of 1972, which abolished Yorkshire as a county and replaced it with four separate counties. North Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, East Riding of Yorkshire, and West Yorkshire. Why was the riding part only kept on the East Yorkshire. Hmm. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. If you know why East Riding kept the riding while the rest lost their riding, do let us know. Rest in peace, Yorkshire. You will always live on in our hearts. <laughs> Did that get your attention? Good, because here's a public service announcement that will chuff your crumpet. Ugh. Sorry, I'm still getting used to using British slang. As of this month, we have started releasing three additional videos per week on our Patreon. These videos include Q&As, travel vlogs, and additional British culture content. So if that sounds like something that interests you, come on over and join us on our Patreon. Link in the description below. Not only does joining our Patreon earn you extra Wandering Ravens videos, it's also a great way to support the channel and help us make better videos more often. Ah! Tea time. Old Smoke. You won't find the name Old Smoke on a map of England, which, now that I think about it, could be because it's actually in Northern Ireland. But you won't even find it on a map of Northern Ireland either, and that's because Old Smoke is a nickname for Belfast. During the Industrial Revolution, the majority of the island of Ireland was rural and farmland but Belfast became a major industrial and shipbuilding center. Due to all the factories and pollution, the city very quickly earned the nickname Old Smoke. Fun fact, and shout out to another patron, thank you Rich, for letting us know that London also had the nickname Old Smoke, 
due to the horrible pollution that used to oppress the city. We do have an old smoky in the USA as well, but it refers to the Appalachian Mountains and mountain fog, not pollution or a city. Old Ricky. Sounds either like it's supposed to be Old Ricky or it's Old Ricky and it's like a, a reek. Some of the French cheese is Old Ricky. <laughs> we have some Old Ricky in our fridge right now. Yeah. London and Belfast aren't the only cities in the UK that are famous for their oppressive Industrial Revolution smoke. Edinburgh got the name Old Ricky because of its numerous buildings that were powered by and heated by coal in the 19th century. And just like London and Belfast, Old Ricky is just another way of saying old smoke. Though there does seem to be a little debate about this, Old Reeky could also be due to the bad smell that the city used to have during the Industrial Revolution. So either old smoke or old smell, which you know, either one is a great thing for your city to be famous for. Yay. Pumpy. You won't find the name Pumpy on a map of the UK, but ask any seafarer, south coast dweller, or football fan and they will quickly tell you that Pumpy is Portsmouth. Portsmouth? or Portsmouth. Well, it's spelled Portsmouth, but I was trying to get ahead of British pronunciation on this one, and I assumed it was, it'd be something odd like Portsmouth. I like yeah. your logic. Thank you. <laughs> you guys can let me know. Did I fail with this one? Is it Portsmouth, or do you actually say Portsmouth? Portsmouth. See, that does not sound British. No, it doesn't, but that's the way I've been pronouncing it in my head. Portsmouth. I could see them doing that. Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Yeah, that sounds like Let's go with British. Portsmouth. There seems to be a lot of debate about why Portsmouth is called Pompey as a nickname. For example, one of the theories that Tony let us know about is that ships entering Portsmouth Harbor, which is actually called Portsmouth Point on navigational charts, abbreviate that to POM, P-O-M dot P in their ship's log. So as a result of writing P-O-M P as an abbreviation, the city of Portsmouth eventually developed a nickname of Pompey. But I have heard other theories, so why don't you let me know which one you think is the strongest. The West Country. The West Country should be Wales. The country on the west side of Britain? Nope. The West Country is an ill-defined area in the southwest leg of England. Cornwall, Dorset, Devon, and Somerset are always included in the West Country, but you could also, if you wished, include... Wiltshire, Gloucestershire, or even Herefordshire. If wild British place names are your thing, then you will be tickled pink by this video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell for fresh British culture content three times a week. And again, a huge thank you to Tony Casey for helping us research and script this video. We appreciate you, Tony. Again, I'm Eric. I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. And we'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.